Welcome, I am Flat Cap Callum and this is my Cheltenham Festival 2023 review. Okay, so basically this is me going down, breakdown of the statistics, the statistics from 2023 Cheltenham Festival. To be clear, there are no horse racing selections on this video. This is me going through a breakdown of each day, how we got on for the week, how we got on on freebets.com videos, how we did on all the anti-post videos. So it's a, a full breakdown of kind of profit and loss for the week, so the £200 outlay across all eight videos I put out, plus a breakdown of whether you would have come out ahead or behind had you followed the anti-post uh, videos. So that is what we've got. Um, <clears throat> I'm making this because because uh, it's, it's sort of a nice way to finish it off. A lot of effort and time goes into Chant Festival. Um, and, uh, and yeah, last year I did a review to wrap it up. The sad thing, because the headline figure from this year is it was a loss Cheltenham Festival. So uh, if you'd followed everything I'd done uh, for the week, um, you would have come out on SP prices. So you may well have done slightly better, but SP prices would have been minor, a 28% loss. Um, so that was the headline figure. So on the backdrop of the previous year, when it was a 61% profit. Um, so yeah, it was it was a tough old week, to be honest. Um and it's, it's hard. It's the one week of the year where I just put an extraordinarily large amount of effort in. Um, and last year it paid off nicely. And this year just didn't didn't quite get there. And, and we didn't really fire on any day. So I'm going to run through the stats. But the overall figure was 200 on, 143.78 back. So that's if you followed all four £40 uh, days on my channel here on Flat Cap Callum. And you did the £10 each day on freebets.com. So 200 on. 14378 back um so that is 72 percent of our stake back 28 percent loss so it was certainly not covered in glory on cheltenham week um but as i am on this channel always transparent so you know i'm not going to dodge making a review video just because the stats don't look very good um it is all above board in terms of what i'm doing so um yeah, so it, it it wasn't the best week. So if I if I break down, I've I've got a few little a few little notes and stuff that I've made as I've as I've kind of gone along, and and so I'll go through highlights of each day, profit and loss from each day to start with. So day one was was a kind of a day I said I'd happily make you know come out breaking even, and we almost did. So it was fifty pound on forty six twenty eight back. Highlights being Honeysuckle uh, one being backed in. Uh, Jazzy Matty was the best price of the day, which we were on at eighteen to one. Um, and St. Roy placing, uh, which had been a, a big uh, anti-post tip of mine. So they, they were kind of the highlights. We did have, I think we had two out of three on the win Trixie as well. But the story of the week was singles kept us going and accumulators let us down, generally speaking. We, we, hit, we hit nothing decent in an accumulator all week. Um, we had a, an individual horse or odd bits, but the, most of the accumulators didn't make any money. Um, so as much as you would have been down for the week... If all you did was place single bets on everything at the same stake, you'd actually come out slightly ahead. So for my single bets only, it was a marginal head. So it wasn't all terrible in that respect, um, because that's no mean feat in itself. But when you add in the complications, it, it kind of, when you've got a few percent margin of, of, of kind of victory there, you, you, you're going to have to be super lucky to get pull that off in accumulators. You need a better margin on singles in order for that to convert to, to accumulators. Um, generally speaking but yeah if you're only a singles backer you've actually come out marginally ahead um, so that was day one so we, we just about broke even day two we took a real hit it was a real struggle on day two the only real highlights was another I think two out of three on the win Trixie and the real whacker was a was a reasonable price win I think it's eight to one but we didn't have a lot on it so we lost about half our stakes it was 22 42 back from the 50 pound outlay so not not a great day so we needed thursday which i deemed to be the best day for value um to uh, to come good for us indeed thursday was the best day for value the shame of it was i wasn't on enough of the horses and i wasn't on any of the decent price winners that came in um and that and that really cost us it was 50 on on day three 16 pound and eight pence because on wednesday and thursday i hit a, hit a nil return on freebets.com full stop um but yeah, sixteen pound eight. It was a heavy loss on the Thursday. We had Mill Green and we had Hitman. We had Deffy Blue that were nice uh, places at decent prices, but no big price winners and nothing joined together. Um, and so that that did really cost us. Then when the last day was the best day because actually overall we made profit. So it's fifty nine pound return for fifty pound on if you were covering everything. 
Uh, Favre was an excellent winner at 33. He's just didn't have anything on it other than a single. Um, Highway 102 in the same race was placed at 80s, which was, was the best placed horse I had um, for the week. Um, so that, that was a good one. Um, and, and we had a reasonable amount of stake on that as well. So it, it helps us get a little bit bit back in. But overall, as, we, as I've said, 200 on, 14378 back. Definitely, uh, definitely below par. So yeah, it was just, it was a frustrating week. Um with with just bits and bits and bobs and 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 that kind of was the theme of the anti post bets as well, so I'll I'll spin through those. Um, so the first anti post vid I did on here was for the championship races best bets, um, and those were my best bets. So we had in the champion hurdle epitome. Well, it didn't turn up, so uh, so that was money back there. Champion chase gentleman to me, that didn't turn up. Um, so that was really really unfortunate because. In those two races, there were two horses as well, uh, or two mentions that weren't on anti post video, but generally speaking. So, on in the champion hurdle, I also had not so sleepy, which I put out 50 to 1 in the non constitution hill market. So, we needed it to come top four and it came fifth. Um, so yeah, it was uh, in terms of placings, distance it was a distance away, but placings terms, it was only one place away from getting us some place money. And Gentleman to me was one that I tipped up at a much, much bigger price um, around the fifth. Well, some got 66, I think, but 50 to 1 was what I put it up as. So we were rolling into uh, into Cheltenham Week with uh, thinking that was going to be a good one and it got pulled out because um, it wasn't well. So so money back on some of them. Then Paisley Park was one of the only ones I put up any post that I didn't back the week, on the week and rightly so because it didn't run a great race. Um, so then that left us with goal, Brave Man's Game running, um, which ran a gallant race to come um, placed in the Gold Cup. So there was a little bit back on that. And then Magic Days, that was another one backed into single figures. Andy Post, we were on it at 40s and it refused to run at the start of the race. I mean, you can't ride it up. So we had pulled out the week before with illness from 50 to 1 into 8s and 40 to 1 into, I think it was 9 to 1, um, refused to run. So unlucky is what i would say because you didn't even find out so um yeah if you'd covered all of those championship bets you would have come out with a bit of a loss albeit um there was some refund in there as well it, it wouldn't have been a strong it wouldn't have been a massive loss um but uh yeah very small loss on those on that same video i did also do some non runner no bets that were a bit risky all of them didn't run in those races. They were all refunded. Um, so yeah, they were risky for a reason, but they were all refunded non-runner no bet bets. So for that championship video, um, I had it down as a very slight loss, um, depending on what you got refunded for, to be honest. Um, so a slight loss pending pending refunds. Then in the novice divisions, again, we had a, we, we just were, were, were a bit unlucky. We started off St. Roy, 33s. That was placed at nine to um, no eleven to one. It was uh, eleven to one SP, but thirty three is anti post. So we had some place money there. Um, City Chief didn't turn up. Gallia de la Tour got massively backed in, but didn't place. Hamonia maker didn't turn up, and Favre de Champdu was really disappointing. So we had two there that didn't turn up and one place. So if all you if if you if you'd done them all anti post and you'd have lost out on a couple there, and you've got the place money sent Roy you would have been slightly behind. If you'd done the non-runner no bet and got that price, then you'd have been slightly ahead, but but nothing special, basically. Th 33s was a nice one to get, but um, yeah, we had two disappointments in there. And then uh, the best of it was uh, the best win bet. So I put up three win bets on the novice. Um, so the first two were, were, were disappointing, but a dream to share won the champion bumper well, and that was backed in at a much shorter price. So... If you'd bat that in, so basically if you'd done everything in the novice divisions, um, you'd have actually come out slightly ahead. So seven to one for the win on Dream to Share and place uh, St. Roy 33s. So if you covered everything singles on the novice uh, bets, you'd have come out slightly ahead. So the championship's slightly down. The novice was slightly up. Um, I haven't got the paper for the uh, for the handicaps, but we only ended up having I put up eight horses for the handicaps and three ran, three ran in the right races. Um, one of them was Mill Green that placed, and it was twenty five as uh, as anti post. So if all you'd done was singles, you would have basically um, got your money back. 
So hopefully no harm done from anyone anti-post. So championship race anti-post video slightly down, novice slightly up, and I w would take the handicaps as break even. If anyone went and did some jumbo combination bets, um, if you got an honor and a no bet, probably would have turned out okay, I should imagine, with one 25 to one place and two losses and the rest non-runners. Um, but uh, yeah, so overall anti-post, I, I, I would, I, I'm not having done exactly the maths on it, I would call it break even. Um, so, uh, so it's not bad because anti post tipping is is much harder than day to day tipping. So, arguably, I did better anti post than I did on the week, um, and and that was including the fact we had gentlemen do me in magic days, which uh, we didn't get a run for our money. So, uh, so yeah, that was the anti post stuff. There was the 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 anti post bet that I put out at the end of twenty twenty two Cheltenham Festival. Um, we it was four horses in that. We only had two. Uh, well, honeysuckle won, but that was tipped up in the champion hurdle, so that was no good. Um, and then we had a couple not not turn up at all. Uh, well, actually, no, one not turn up, which was tell me something, girl, I think. Uh, and then flooring porter was poor in the stayers hurdle, and Edward Stone was poor in the champion chase. So if you'd done that kind that bet like a year ago, then uh, then yeah, you'd have got nothing back on that one. So, <laughs> so it, it was yeah it's one of those ones where it wasn't all bad but there was nothing massively exciting there wasn't anything to really get like into because we kind of missed out on some things and we got bits of bob so yeah it wasn't great but wasn't awful um is how i would uh how i describe Cheltenham 2023 um so yeah so that that's my, my my breakdown um so overall it was a loss we got a few wins we got a few bits we got a few bits anti-post but overall um no profit was made at Cheltenham uh, for me for for 2023 um it's not all about Cheltenham I put a lot of time and effort and I you know personally I, I pump probably more that week than I do any other week of the year um that being said there are plenty of other days in the year to win it's not all about Cheltenham but um yeah, I, I was I was disappointed um, overall, and uh, yeah, it, to to coin the regular phrase used all the time these days, it is what it is. All right, that is all I'm going to do. That's my my conclusion for my Cheltenham Festival 2023 video. If you've taken 12 minutes out of your day to watch this, then well done to you. Thank you very much. I appreciate all the support. Win, lose, or draw. Um, there's some lovely people who uh, who stick by and uh, and follow diligently even when uh, Cheltenham doesn't go so well. So thank you for all of that support. I will see you on other videos or I may see you next year at Cheltenham 2024 when we get round there if you want to stick a bit of faith my way. All right. Thank you very much. Cheerio.